welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. I have no clue what week this is at the moment, but this is a weekly wrap up. So this week has still been very slumpy and been kind of empty mood wise, which will make sense on what I did finish. As I am not an escapist reader, when I don't feel good, I that's when I binge TV. I don't read. Let's just get into it. All right, so for this week, I finished two and continued reading one. And <laughs> I'm laughing because this is a totally mood reader thing to do. I did not finish any of the books I have been currently reading. Um, what I did finish, or the first thing I did finish, was Because of Miss Bridgerton by Julia Quinn. And this is part of the uh, prequel quartet to the eight siblings. This is actually about like the neighbors of the Bridgerton family, but during the time of the Edmund and Violet. So these are... I know that two of the books, the heroine is Edwin's sisters, and one is his cousin, and then the other one is not related, but it's all four of their, all four of the brothers of their neighbor. So this book follows Billy Bridgerton, Edmund's eldest sister, the eldest child in the family, and she is considered unconventional. The way she's described, I'm thinking she has like ADHD because she wants to be outside all the time. She's constantly moving, very sharp, very smart, and she likes to be practical. So if she's out going around the farm, ten like working with the tenants, she wants to be in breeches. If it's a formal dinner, then she will wear a dress. Her love interest is George Rokesby, who is the eldest brother. If I remember right, he's about seven years older than her. And because the Rokesby's and the Bridgertons live about three miles from each other. They basically grown up with each other, but George was enough older than his siblings that he didn't really play with them. So Billy got to know his brothers, Edmund and Andrew very well, and their sister, Mary. Her best friend is Mary. And so she's always had more of an antagonistic relationship with George. So the book starts. She's on a roof. She's fallen onto a roof because she climbed up a tree to save a cat and then the cat scratched her and they both fell onto the roof. And she sees someone coming and she yells for help because she's sprained her ankle and it's George. And you know, things go from there. It's kind of the realization. I really enjoyed it because it was one of those realization stories of, hey, there's always been this person and it wasn't like really enemies. But it was more like, oh, you've always been my sibling's friend, but now I'm more interested, or but now I see you in a different light kind of thing. And for both of them, they both kind of had that realization, be like, oh, because they, one of the, Andrew is there at the house as well, because he had broken his arm. And so he's recuperating and he even is watching them have a very much a sibling relationship and he realized no she's never Billy's never treated me like a sibling I'm something else which you know emboldens him lets him be like oh maybe I can be a love interest and it was just a lot of fun and Quinn's writing is very easy to read it's very bingeable and if you're feeling down I wouldn't say like, like I said I'm not an escapist reader but it's very easy to make progress and be like, okay, I want to know what's happening. And whereas with the Bridgerton series, the other series um, of the eight siblings were the first books you got to see a little bit into their marriage, these follow more of the standard fare of they meet, they banter, and along the way eventually find out that they have fallen in love. And so it ends with them saying, hey, I want to marry you and proclaiming their love. I was a little sad about that because I, I do enjoy getting to see the, as people settle into marriage, that's, that's a side of romance you don't get to see a lot of. 
And then the other book I finished this week was The Girl with a Big Believe Husband, also by Julia Quinn, number two in this quartet. And this follows the heroine is the one who is not related to the Bridgertons. Her name is Cecilia Harcourt, her brother Thomas, and then Edward Rokesby are fighting in America. And from what I understand, this is like the American Revolution time period. And so yeah, you know, Edward's a British soldier fighting against the Americans. And Cecilia has gone to America because her dad has died. She, her cousin is trying to say that they should get married and she doesn't want to marry him. She finds out her brother is injured. And so she decides that she's going over to America to nurse him back to health because she does not want to get trapped into a marriage with her cousin. And when she gets there, her brother is missing. And she's like, well, how can he be missing? I got a letter saying that he was injured. That means he should have been accounted for. And no one's willing to help her, the unmarried sister. And while she's there, she hears that his best friend, Edward, has been brought in and Edward's injured. And so she's like, well, this is my brother's best friend. And Edward and her had passed, like, not passed notes through her brother, but they would add things to each other on the letters that went to the brother. Because at this time, it's not appropriate for an unmarried lady to write a man. But essentially, they're writing to each other just via the brother. And so she, she's trying, she, she wants to go help him because that's her brother's best friend. Nobody's listening to her, so she declares that she is his wife because she's told that only family and military officers can approach him. And they believe her. So she starts taking care of him, and then he wakes up, and he has partial amnesia. He had been scouting and doesn't remember anything of the event, but he remembers Cecilia and uses her first name when he wakes up, which she was planning to confess to him, like, I'm not really your wife, but I was trying to get in to take care of you because I'm here looking for my brother. But when he calls her by his first name, you know, everything goes downhill from there. And this has so far been my favorite out of this quartet, just because I really like Edward and like his, he's very practical. <laughs> Romances, they've buoyed my spirits and means that I hope to get more read this week. This week I did also continue working on reading Monster Hunters by David Wiley. I'm less than 100 pages left. My goal is to finish that this week. No matter what, that that's like the priority read. I feel bad it's been taking me so long because I am enjoying it. And then also priority reads for this week are Reclaim the Stars. Basically my, the books I have for the Magical Readathon that I have present. So Reclaim the Stars is a collection of short stories science fiction and fantasy. My goal is to read one a day. Then Root Magic by Eden Royce. Uh, this is about siblings who are growing up in the time of desegre desegregation and their uncle also is wanting to teach them root magic which runs in their family. And then also I would like to read City of Shattered Light. This, is, <laughs> this was my buzzword sci-fi prompt for March. And with the reading slump, I never picked it up again. I'd like to because it is an interlibrary loan and it has to go back this weekend. So I would really like to get this one done as well. So because this week finished in a new month, we're gonna talk about stats for March. And so for a reading slump, I did not do that badly. I mean, yeah, looking at my reading stats uh, for February, I read the same amount page count was a little bit lower, but you know, that's okay. I read 13 stories. I read, all right, so I finished five novels, seven short stories, and one novelette. My monthly goal is eight, four novels, four shorter pieces of fiction. Now for my tw goal for the 2022 new release, I read zero again, which is astonishing since I have a whole bunch of new releases out on my shelf. But no, I, I did not read a new release. I'm not doing so very well on that one. For my Goodreads currently reading, I started with 160, and then I end March with 159, because Brimstone by Sherry Priest was a book that was on my currently reading. 
so I got to take that off. For my physical TBR, it has stayed the same at 71. I haven't read anything else this week, or I haven't read anything else this month that I actually own. And then to my goal to finish already started series, I started this month off with 87, still have 17 caught up. I finished zero and I started two. I know one is the Julia Quinn Quartet, which will be done in April. What was the other one I started? Oh, and the other series I started was The Cruel Stars by John Birmingham. His newest book came out this year in 2022. And so once I read that, that will be a cut up series. So I have 89 left, but my cut up is still 17. I'm growing on my series, not declining. Oh boy. For my writing wrap up, in March I had highs and I had lows. Again, I had a. I, with my reading, or like my reading, I also had a writing slump, but that was more because I got to my second perspective, the male, found out his name is Leo, L E I O. That took me a while to. At first, I think I was using, I was using the placeholder Lyceum because I was just like, I, it's Ly, Leo, Leo, it, something like that, but it's not any of those. So I was like, I'll just use a placeholder name. But now I know it's Leo. So you can think of like Princess Leia, O instead of A, Leo. And Leo is not doing very well. He's just woken up in prison and has been betrayed by person he thought would never betray him so he's still putting all that together and my mood crashed I'm really bad about trying to feel what my characters feel so I can write better from that perspective and this is why people say it's hard to be married to a writer it was the end of the week where I was like okay I have to write this otherwise I'm just gonna keep dwelling on the scene and not move forward and I want to be a happy person I don't want to be a sad and just not want to do anything person so that's where I am with my writing having that kind of sad well I had the breakthrough of I now know his name but also this is going to be a sad scene to write and because I was sad this week and feeling down and depressed I binge TV. So for other media, I binged Bridgerton season two. And I have some thoughts. <laughs> I think the actors are amazing. The They portrayed their characters very well. I had no problem believing this was Kate and Anthony. The changes they made to the family didn't bother me. Background didn't bother me. I love that they highlighted their competitiveness with one another. The costumes were beautiful. Regency. I was a little annoyed that they used Lady Danbury again in the fashion they did since she kind of was like, oh, here, let me help Simon find a wife from season one. And now, oh, here, let me help you guys or let me help Edwina find a husband. I don't want this to be a thing where she is in every season like, oh, let me champion this young person who's going to happen to marry Bridgerton. I love the actress. I think she's amazing, but it was a little much for me now. I have not read The Duke and I in this Eight Siblings series because since I watched season one last year, after that I just read the other seven books. So number two, The Viscount Who Loved Me is my favorite out of those because I just, I love Kate. She's amazing. My issue with this season is the writing. Obviously there's things that they couldn't do. Um, they did nods to the original conflicts in the story. The thing I hated the most was the relationship between Edwina and Kate. In the book, it is more on par. The relationship of the Sheffield, in the book they're the Sheffields and the show they're the Sharmas. Mary the mother has more of the leading mother role. Kate and Edwin are both being presented at this time because it, it's more economical for their family and they're pretty sure Edwina has a good chance to find a husband, which will then hopefully help Kate, even though that's not one of Kate's goals. And it's Edwina who says, anybody who wants to marry me has to have my sister's permission because she values her sister's opinion. 
Kate is not overbearing and trying to plan her sister's life. I felt that was a very much a disservice in the TV show. How they did that, I understand they're ramping everything up. Um, everyone is more exaggerated and pronounced, but it's making them more one note. So I was kind of like, eh, okay, sure, we'll, we'll do this with, you know, Kate being so domineering of her sister's love life. I have a degree in film and media studies. I understand that when you are doing an adaptation of a book, you can't do things the same way. I, I get that. That's not a problem. What I absolutely hated was the trope that, and spoilers if you have not watched the show, I'll have a spoiler tag here, and when it drops, then you'll know that I'm back to non-spoilers, but Edwina finding out at her wedding, at the altar, that her groom-to-be is in love with her sister, I hated that trope. Hated it. Yes, she needed to find out, and yes, she needed to be pissed about it because Kate didn't tell her she had feelings for him. Because that would have been a completely different story. And Edwina's not stupid, especially like later she's like what observing them. I was like, how did I not see this before? And was I blind, really? That's where then you had to shoe in a reconciliation with the sisters at the end. With, and it was done in a very trite fashion. And in this way, it would have been better if Edwina had f found out beforehand that her sister was in love with Anthony and he was in love with her sister. And she broke off the engagement and then Anthony and Kate were found in a compromising situation so then they have to get married and then you get to see them suddenly into marriage and Anthony dealing with I'm falling in love with this woman and I don't want to be in love with my wife and his fear that they're going to cause heartbreak if someone has to die. All of that could still have been handled and Kate having to learn that it's okay to give up control sometimes. I guess that's how they they have her portrayed in the in the TV show and the spoiler again in the book it was about old trauma. That's I guess that's also that's not a spoiler. Yeah. Yeah, so in the book she was dealing with a trauma that she didn't realize she had. That was her conflict that Anthony got to help her with. Again, I wanted to see them get used to being married because we don't have a lot of romance that does that. And I love that the first season of Bridgerton showed that. You got to see Simon and Daphne in their honeymoon phase as she's trying to learn how to be a duchess and finding out, you know, what she thought she had agreed to in her marriage was not actually what was happening. You get to see that going through. So yeah, so that's why I feel like the writing of Bridgerton season two let me down. No, I'm still going to read season three, or no, I'm still going to watch season three. So I wonder if season three is going to be Colin and Penelope because they, they laid the hints for that. Whereas in the book series, Benedict is third, but they didn't lay in that storyline. At one point I thought they were, and then it went a completely different direction. Oh, also, Dustin and I watched The Return of the King, the animated version. Not as... This is just animated. And... It is goofy, still. Yes. You know, made in the 70s. I was kind of making fun of it, and I felt bad because he turned to me and said, Stop ruining my childhood! And I'm like, okay, I'll stop. But still, I, this is... <laughs> These two animated uh, movies are not ones that I would share with further generations. It was interesting though because they're the same voices from the first one, The Lord of the Rings, but then it's a completely different animation style. So we, Bilbo looks completely different, Samwise looks completely different all of them. And they did a framing device where they're telling the story and to Bilbo and they're saying, this is what happened. And oh yeah, no, it was just, it was nuts. <laughs> so that's been my 
week wrap up. I hope that your end of March was better than mine, or at least you were more motivated to read and or write. See you later.